Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to our witnesses for being here. As policymakers, we have the responsibility to weigh our words uh, carefully, especially during discussions like the one that we're having here today. The Chinese Communist Party has adopted Russian propaganda efforts to interfere in our, in our elections and advance its own objectives. We should address that issue seriously, and we can and must do so without stigmatizing and discriminating against people based on their identities. Racial slurs are not a national security strategy. They do nothing to help counter the threat posed by the CCP. Mr. Mattis, in a June 2023 tweet, you wrote that equating the Chinese Communist Party to Chinese culture is, quote, racist by any other name, end quote. I agree. Distinguishing between a political party and an entire race of people and its culture is important, and we have the moral responsibility to make that clear, yet it's lost on some. Mr. Mattis, what is the harm in equating China's ruling party, the Chinese Communist Party, with all people of Chinese descent? One, because the history of China is far bigger than the Chinese Communist Party. It is one of the world's great civilizations. There contains, you know, whether you accept the way in which the current sort of minority structure is, is described or not, it includes a lot of different people from, from different places that have come together or have been sort of defined as Chinese in the last 170 years. Another reason is that there are a lot of Chinese Americans who are Chinese people who came to this United States and have chosen to become citizens. I remember a classmate of mine at University of Washington was seventh generation Chinese, which is more American than I am by any measure that counts. And to pretend that they are somehow represented by the Chinese Communist Party rather than their local politicians, their elected congressional members and their state senators and governors and president, I think it dismisses the choices that they or their family have made. Thank you. Uh, Anti-Asian racism is pervasive in this country. Republican rhetoric and policies have helped to normalize it. In March 2020, Donald Trump tweeted the racist phrase, quote, China virus, end quote, in reference to COVID-19. In the week that followed, there was a significant increase in anti-Asian content on Twitter, as well as an increase in hate crimes against Asian Americans, according to a 2021 study. I ask for unanimous consent to enter this study from the American Journal of Public Health into the record. Without objection to order. Mr. Mattis, how can Congress address the CCP without contributing to xenophobia? The first is to continue making such distinctions because even if, they're, even if they are semantic in terms of policies, they help us frame in our own head, in our own mind, what it is that we should be focused on and how our efforts should be guided. The second is that I've I firmly believe that we have a, a shortage of China expertise for all of the different departments in the government. And finding ways, either through the creation of an open source center, as, as Colonel Newsham mentioned, the sort of the recreation of the Foreign Broadcast Information Service, but he's really discussing its public dissemination issue to make information available. Thank because you. at the end of the day, our federal government and law enforcement will focus on illegal behavior, and that's where we want it in a democracy. But what we're talking about is often unacceptable but still legal behavior. And that's something that has to be guided by a civil a discussion in civil society about how we, how we govern ourselves and how we deal with each other as citizens. Thank you very much. Um, the AAPI community has uh, seen a sharp increase in discrimination and race-based violence since the start of the pandemic. There were 158 anti-Asian hate crimes in the country in 2019. This number jumped to 746 in 2021, nearly five times higher. Our constituents are depending on us to help them, not endanger them with racist rhetoric. As a proud member of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, my hope is that Congress will prioritize policies that affirm and protect the AAI members of our community, like the Southeast Asian Deportation Relief Act, and stop contributing to hateful acts against them. Uh, and finally, Professor Snyder, when political leaders normalize racist language that pits one group against another, does it make our country more or less safe? As our adversaries know and seek to exploit, it makes us less safe. Thank you. I yield back. 